back in the studio. So today I'll be talking about the advantages and disadvantages between DSLR and mirrorless cameras. There are many questions surrounding this topic being the clear differences between the two types of cameras. So questions like how do both of these cameras work, which one is better and what is the autofocus like on both cameras? Well hopefully I will answer most if not all of your questions as clearly as I can so please do stay and watch until the end. We also have a blog over on our website which is wilkerson.co.uk forward slash blog where there will be more information on this matter. We're mainly going to be talking about the differences between these two types of cameras but one major thing that they have in common is that they're both interchangeable lens cameras. Now moving on to how DSLR cameras actually work. Firstly DSLR stands for digital single lens reflex. This DSLR that I've got with me today is a Canon EOS 60 Mark II. These cameras are built using the same design as a 35mm film camera from the past. But to make it a bit easier, I'll draw it out for you so you can understand it a little bit better. So here I've got the outlining of a DSLR camera. So the reflex design allows light to travel through the lens and reflect off the mirror into the pentaprism and then into your viewfinder. So when you're looking through the viewfinder, you are actually looking straight through the lens at the scene in front of you. You won't know exactly how your image will turn out until you take the photo and look at it on the screen. Once you are ready to take the image, press the shutter button and the mirror will flick up and the light will travel into the image sensor giving you a digital image. This movement is where the very distinct noise of the DSLRs come from. And that is how DSLR cameras work in basic terms. So moving on to mirrorless cameras, this camera is the Sony a7 III. So unlike DSLR cameras, mirrorless cameras don't operate the exact same. They operate without a reflex system. So when the light travels through the lens, it passes directly to the digital sensor. When you look through the viewfinder on a mirrorless camera, you are actually looking at a tiny LCD screen, which shows you the image the sensor is capturing. This is really useful because what you see is what you get before you take the photo so you can immediately see if the image is overexposed and change the settings in real time but I'll elaborate on that further into the video. Now we have addressed how both cameras work, let's delve into the unique features of both cameras. As I was saying earlier, when you are shooting with a mirrorless camera, you can directly view what the outcome of the image is going to look like. Mirrorless cameras hold a lot of information through the electronic viewfinder or on the digital display. So as you're shooting, you can alter these settings and immediately see the outcome. Another benefit for mirrorless system is that it displays an exposure histogram or you can choose for it to display an exposure histogram through the electronic viewfinder so you can control the exposure between your subject and the background. So as you can see here, I'm altering the ISO and immediately you can see the change in exposure. Whereas if you were to do the same with a DSLR, you would only see the differences in your captured images. With DSLR cameras, when you look through your optical viewfinder, all you see is what the mirror is reflected from the light traveling through the lens. On the viewfinder, there isn't as much information as a mirrorless camera but you still have your ISO, your shutter speed and your aperture to ensure that you can read your settings clearly. Now use this sparingly because it's not always a correct representation. So personally, I miles prefer an electronic viewfinder for simple reasons of having faster results and more accuracy with my exposure. You will tend to find that entry level DSLRs are less expensive than mirrorless alternatives or that entry level mirrorless cameras don't have a viewfinder so they're not a like for like option. You might also notice that the newest most feature rich mirrorless cameras seem very expensive compared to DSLR cameras. This is because they have newer technologies and more features. Here are some price ranges for different entries and levels of cameras. So when wondering where to put your budget, think about the features you might need for your photography rather than which camera might work out cheaper. So for me in this section, it's a draw. They're both similar prices for similar results. Now let's move on to the size of the cameras. As you can see, DSLR cameras are a lot bigger than any other camera. This camera is 144 by 111 by 75 millimeters and weighs 765 grams. 
This is because internally the DSLR camera bodies has a lot more going on as explained earlier. DSLRs require a reflex design which is the operation of the mirror and the pentaprism to allow the optical viewfinder to work. Because of this it just generally needs more room in the body. But comparing it to the mirrorless cameras, these cameras don't need the mirror inside, which means that they immediately become smaller and lighter. This camera is 127 by 96 by 74 millimeters and weighs 650 grams. You can see why some photographers might prefer these cameras over DSLR cameras because they have the same size sensor and image quality as DSLRs, but without the bulk. These are both full frame cameras. The difference in size becomes more significant when you introduce APS-C or micro four third cameras. This is because the image sensors within these cameras are a lot smaller. For me, mirrorless cameras win here, unless you prefer a camera with a larger grip or generally prefer shooting with a larger camera body. But for me, mirrorless, wins by a mile. Moving on to the battery size, DSLRs and mirrorless cameras have an obvious size difference as I just mentioned there. So when talking about the size, the mirrorless cameras beat DSLRs by a mile. However, when it comes to battery size, it unfortunately becomes a disadvantage for mirrorless cameras. Most manufacturers try to make mirrorless cameras as small as possible, which also includes their batteries. Mirrorless cameras have a lot of digital features that require constant power, like the LCD display or the electronic viewfinder. Another factor that drains a lot of power is the in-body image stabilization, which is a common feature in a lot of mirrorless cameras. You can carry spare batteries around with you to avoid this problem, but that depends on whether you're willing to do so. So in this sector, DSLR cameras win by a mile because they have a bigger battery, therefore are more reliable on longer shoot days. Now, moving on to in-body image stabilization, it's mostly only found in mirrorless cameras. Not all of them, but a lot of them. It's a relatively new technology within cameras that aim to stabilize your image sensor. It allows handheld shooting at much longer shutter speeds, stable and shake free video footage, and sharp still images. I activated the in body image stabilization, so let's take a little walk and see how it holds up. Ignore the mess of the studio, but I think it's holding up quite well. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section. I'll deactivate it now so you can see the differences. This is deactivated, so we don't have the in body image stabilization on. So let me know if you prefer it with or without. You've got to bear in mind that it does drain the battery line. In-body image stabilisation is a feature that DSLRs don't tend to have, which I guess is another benefit for most mirrorless cameras. So with that being said, mirrorless cameras win 100%. Most mirrorless cameras are capable of far higher frame rates for stills than DSLR cameras. So let's take the Canon EOS 1D X Mark III for example. This gives us 20 frames per second for around £7,000 and the Canon EOS R5 mirrorless camera gives us the same frame rate but around £4,300 which is a massive price difference let alone you get better features on the EOS R5. So my point is that you can do that or more on a much affordable mirrorless camera. It's great for wildlife and sports talk. Most definitely mirrorless cameras win here. Better frames per second for the money you pay as well as all the other benefits that come with it. During the mid 2000s when mirrorless cameras were first released, the main disadvantage at the time for mirrorless cameras was a limited amount of stock for mirrorless lenses. However, jumping forward to the present day, there is a wide range of selection of mirrorless lenses across all manufacturers. Here you can see the mirrorless ranges across all brands. The limited stock of lenses is no issue anymore and in fact can now use most DSLR lenses on a mirrorless camera with a compatible adapter. So with that being said, I'd say mirrorless cameras have an advantage here because they have access to new dedicated lenses and a raft of existing lenses thanks to adapters. Autofocus is an important feature when it comes to shooting wildlife and sports photography, especially when working with fast moving subjects, but most photographers will rely on autofocus at some point. DSLR cameras used to have an advantage in the autofocus sector because they use a technology called phase detection. You can see in this diagram here how exactly how it works. The light entering the lens is split into two images, the front and back focus of the subject 
It then measures the convergence between the two beams of light. So back in the day, mirrorless cameras were restricted to contrast detection, which made it very difficult to identify the subject. Contrast detection is when the image sensor detects the highest contrast within the frame and pulls focus to that. Autofocus on early mirrorless cameras just couldn't compete with the autofocus system on a DSLR. Talking about mirrorless cameras in general now, they have now incorporated phase detection onto the image sensor, which compares the two images and pulls accurate focus and then applies contrast detection. This leaves you with very sharp and crisp results. With that being said, when it comes to accuracy of focus, I personally think mirrorless cameras win. Although this could be argued with some photographers, both DSLR and mirrorless cameras have a wide range of autofocus settings. So it depends on what works best for you and your needs. So if you need to take pictures quietly, for example, at a wedding or wild animals or insects, a DSLR is much louder. The traditional DSLR sound you'll know well as a result of the movement of the mirror and the mechanical shutter, these moving parts create noise. Whilst mirrorless cameras also have a mechanical shutter, they don't have the mirror inside which reduces noise. But one feature nearly all mirrorless cameras have is an electronic shutter. This means you can shoot in complete silence and this is a major advantage of most if not all mirrorless cameras. However, there are some advantages to this. One being rolling shutter, so be careful when using it. Some lens aperture blades make more noise than the electronic shutter, so be mindful of that as well. So for me, mirrorless cameras win in this section as well. Now, when it comes to shooting video on both DSLR and mirrorless cameras, they have both improved dramatically. Mirrorless cameras have really taken off a video. Although Canon lead the way with the video on their DSLR Canon EOS 60 Mark II, it's mirrorless cameras that have dominated video creation in the last few years. Better autofocus for video, coupled with newer features, including better stabilization, 4K video, and more recently 8K which means lots of creators have switched to mirrorless for video. Being smaller and lighter means that they can easily be put on a gimbal for smooth video and they're easier to build into a rig with microphones and monitors. So when shooting in live view, the mirrorless camera's focus area is the whole image sensor, whereas DSLRs tend to pull focus within the central box of the frame. So if you're filming or photographing a moving subject where you need to track the subject in and out of the central thirds, the mirrorless cameras have an advantage. Sony especially have very advanced video autofocus systems for beam face and eye detection and animal face and eye detection. This makes it easier to track any subject automatically, whether that's race cars, animals, humans, and pretty much anything else. The camera organically identifies what you are trying to shoot and tracks it accordingly to the necessary autofocus system. This process makes it easier for videographers especially, saving time and not only giving off better results. In the newer DSLR cameras, manufacturers have enabled electronic shutter mode, which permanently props up the mirror whilst recording in live view so that the camera can record in live tracking. Which is better, DSLR or mirrorless cameras? I know this is a very controversial question and for some people it's a very easy question to answer, but it all depends on what you want out of your camera and whether you need the features your cameras do or don't have. I've split each section up here to summarize the final advantages and disadvantages of each camera. Remembering this is from my experience and not anybody else's. In my opinion, I prefer mirrorless cameras personally because they are more versatile for what I do as a photographer and videographer, but I can see why some people might stick with the good old DSLR cameras. But with that being said, that is all I have for you today. I hope you found this video useful and can decide which camera you prefer yourself. If you did enjoy this video, then please like and subscribe below. And also let me know in the comment section which camera you prefer and why. And let's get a real conversation started. Now until the next video, I will see you very soon.